Welcome to the Texas Goat Radio Show. This is the documentary. Uh, you can find it on the Big Bear Archive. Obviously, that's the channel right there. Uh, but this is the documentary that Owen has been talking about and that I've been referencing. Came out six years ago on Benjamin the Comedy of Death. I thought it was the death of comedy, but uh, that might be why it's difficult to find. Anyways. <sighs> Okay, sir, it's going to be fine. You're going to be great. There's no cameras, no pressure. And remember, you're doing them a favor. I don't know, Jim. I've never done this without my crew by my side. Yeah, I know, sir, but we got people listening to everything you're saying. It'll be fine. Just give them a signal. Okay. I can do this. You will do this, sir. There used to be, I don't know, because I've seen that clip before, and there's something edited out of that. I'm not going to say what it was, but, uh. Oh, sure, it's some kind of arrangement that if you were, if you're driving in a car. Human being. A human. Bad town. I just couldn't stop laughing and shit. I just. Anyways, yeah, so this is the documentary. Owen Benjamin, The Comedy of Death. I thought it was way longer than 24 minutes. Um, I know for a fact that the first time that I watched it, it was on another channel. It wasn't on the big bear archive. But anyways, this is the Texas Go Radio Show. And that is the, well, let's just. I guess I haven't stopped. They just have this understanding. So if you meet Aaron, a lot of people are kind of like, that kid's weird. If you meet Owen, a lot of people are like, wow, that kid's weird. But if you put them together, it makes sense. It was almost, it was like an instant thing. It was like we're instantly best friends from the day we met. We met the first day of orientation. And then from then on, we are just always together for everything we did. My name is Owen. I'll be flowing and showing and going. And I got this over here. His name is Willie. Silly. Yeah, we try to free Willie, but you a bitch. I got a chain on my neck. You got a a, 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 a dick in your ass. <laughs> Why don't you play with my dildo? Yeah. Guns your head, you stupid motherfucker. You just smell like shit. And I shit your mama's pits. Stupid ass. We had jokes that no one else would ever possibly get. Reaching a mental level on things that most people just can't even imagine. So one night we actually peed our pants. Like, we did it on purpose. We wanted to say that we laughed so hard we peed our pants. <laughs> Dude, I just, you know why I'm dying right now? It's because I, I can tell that you're going to be good at this, dude. The only, the only other people who are good at this is me and Owen that I've ever okay, seen. Because right, right. I haven't done this with anything. That's why I'm pissing my pants right now. Right? Pretty much could act any way they wanted with each other. When the two of them got together, there was a whole different vibe between the two of them because they just fed off each other. I mean, in the same way that they could reach a level. If you hear snoring in the background, uh... Mr. Toad is taking a nap next to me. Of polarity together. I mean, they could also get deepness on the same level, you know. He was there for me, like, when we were becoming adults, you know, like, at a very awkward time in our life. We loved each other. I need your stinky smell. <laughs> <laughs> me and him were, or especially him, because he looked so girly, was constantly called gay. And then, of course, I was always called gay because we always hung out. And so we always just made a satire out of it. And that's it. It's that, it's that simple. Just satirizing what bullies make fun of you for. And then he was the best at it. Live in L.A. now. Give it up for L.A. L.A. is a great city. You guys like L.A.? A lot of people hate L.A., man. A lot of people diss on L.A. because they say everyone's fake. Ciao, ragazzi. It's crazy watching Owen uh, be normal compared to how he is now. I'm in fucking way to my first day of snowboarding. Don't even know where the fuck I'm gonna go. Ah! Um, yeah, so it's the first day, and I'm pumped. I mean, the dude was jumping off a cliff, and he pushed himself to the edge on a mountain to deal with these feelings he has inside. Like, that's his art. Like, it's 
also beautiful to watch. It also makes you feel really good. Well, our final results in the slope style competition looks like it's fun. Like, I didn't expect winning at all. Like, when I woke up this morning, 2003, Minoraba. Boy, out of my fucking bed. I'm saying. hundreds of dollars to make it look like you're just sleeping. You're not sleeping. You're dead. Yeah, there were, there were four wakes over two days through each afternoon, I think. You know, obviously Aaron had friends everywhere, so and the fact that he had so many friends, there was the necessity to have that many wakes. Everyone would go out to lunch in between wakes, so everyone would be together laughing, joking around. After the wake, everyone just got shit-faced, blackout drunk, and it was just like... Emotions were raring so much that I think everyone just broke down to like almost eight form. Like everyone was like a monkey. Like we're about to start throwing feces at each other. We just made fun of just how, I don't know, just how much we would have laughed at it. Just the absurdity of it. Yeah! A lot of the things that we love about each other, you know, just like the openness and whatever, we could do anything we wanted. Like, just went to a ridiculous degree, you know? Everyone just wanted to get naked. Just be insane. I felt so exposed and so terrible that literally I would have been happy if someone had just, like, fucking punched me in the face. Like, I wanted to feel anything except for what I was feeling. Well, this was officially insane. always felt like he was coming back he was just still on his trip and then just the fact that you're at that funeral kind of you know it hit home and or when you watch you know his family carry his body in and his friends it's a little tougher to swallow basically if there's anything good you can take from it is you, you want to live how he lived and you want to incorporate that into your life because he lived the way you should 110 percent enjoying every moment so you try not to dwell so much on negative stuff and you think about you know how he was always just beaming and that's how you wanted to be he just had this uncanny ability to to really just make people feel good about what they're doing his ability to connect with all kinds of different people and all kinds of different levels he's real pretty so people like to approach him i think they just felt good talking to someone who was so pretty. He could really bring out the best in people. I think a great thing he told me once was that uh, that hate isn't the opposite of love. And I was like, yeah, indifference is. You know, I was trying to get, put my two cents in. And he, and, he, and he thought that fear is the opposite of love. And he was never scared. So he was one of the greatest loving people I've ever known. Just love being alive. And he wanted you to share your life with him. And that's why people were drawn to him. I guess I'm just glad that I know him. That was, you know, lucky to know. Kissed a girl yesterday. I wanna tell you all my love back. I saw a movie today. If you had seen it, it would have happened. The time we had.
Is that is going to impact my material? Like, there's things that I want to talk about now that are different. Why, why are you guys so, like, just chilling? This isn't a funeral. This is fun. This is funness. What do you guys want to talk about? After I first died, I wanted to shock people into feeling the way that I felt, like, that terrible feeling, just so I could have the company of them. I, I saw a pro-life bumper sticker on a, on a car with a, a gun rack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, pro life, right? Gun guy? <laughs> he, he loves it. Texas guy's like, yeah, fucking kill him. <laughs> That's an uncomfortable silence. I, I don't know. I just like that that screeching halt. Like that happened in Plattsburgh when I was out there. It's one some big meathead who probably used to make fun of me and Aaron comes up and was like, yo, if we're fucking, we're your little fucking faggot friend, man. I was like, oh yeah, he's dead. <laughs> it's just like and I almost feel bad like in a way just making him feel that awful but I just couldn't help it it was just too fucking hilarious the funny thing about abortion <laughs> that's, a, that's a great segue <laughs> I don't think like just death is gonna make anyone laugh but the worst things in life are always gonna be the funniest like my abortion clinic slogans I mean that's my go to material <laughs> anyway I was uh Abortion clinics lately. This is what I do. I think I'm showing abortion. Don't judge me. Anyway, I think they should have better marketing. I think their marketing sucks. It's like family planning. You know? God, you're not going to Magic Mountain, are you? No. I think it should be like, if he doesn't pull it out, we will. Everyone has their own sense of what's right and wrong. Uh, so it's uh, definitely weird just kind of like hitting a certain level of detachment and doing something like this, which you know, I guess a certain level of detachment is always healthy, I think. For, I kind of want to write jokes about death, but a lot of times those bomb. The other day this girl told me to live each day like it's my last, you know? So I listened to her, and, and I think it's a great way to live your life, and now all I do is just cry all day long. This is my last day, you know? I'm just so sad. I don't want God to be all knowing, you know? When I was a little kid, I let my dog fuck my leg for like an hour. If I died, there'd be a lot of like uncomfortable silences and like weird looks. Is that something I can end on? Even though I don't really believe in an afterlife per se, I can almost see Aaron laughing at it. I try to picture Aaron hearing a joke and laughing, and he's just still so pissed about being dead that he's not laughing, but he, I think he will laugh. Well, I would say deranged. Speaking of a sense of humor only because uh, it was. Yeah, he had the darkest sense of humor of anyone I've ever known in my life. Like, he made me look like the Dalai Lama. How do you get a baby to stop crying? Oh. It's just an axe. Because <laughs> he would play really elaborate pranks on people that would make people, like, feel very, very awful. My name's Aaron Shoemaker, and, um... We're about to slap the fuck out of Jake. I don't know. I got this great idea for his kid. You okay. Yeah, what is, what's the right. idea? It's you standing there. <laughs> ah, you <laughs> prick. I don't, I don't know if he had any profound reason of slapping me in the face like that, but it was just... He just knew that he could get away with it with me and that I would probably find some level find it funny and, and I did. <laughs> and now... As I look back, it's something that's fun for me to watch. Yeah, that's all I needed to do. Just to find a way to focus on you. Maybe on some level in my mind, there was some kind of bond that we had through slapping each other in the face. Ah! I don't know, you might be telling him something serious and you'd be a little insecure about it, and all of a sudden he just bust out laughing his face off and you'd be like, I guess it is kind of funny, you know? <laughs> Because I was snorting Ritalin. The people are like, why are you snorting Ritalin, right? Is that your question? You're like, why are you snorting Ritalin? Because I couldn't afford Coke, all right? Because I was trying to be Mr. Superhuman, you know? Like, uh, I kept a high grade point average. I was starred around the lacrosse team. I, like, was still, you know, getting with chicks and being the man and everything. I was just didn't want to sleep ever so i didn't <laughs> i'd be up for like four days just snorting ritalin I had to go to the hospital I had to get heart surgery i had something called wolf parkinson white syndrome almost died when i was in the hospital bed though one of my friends came in we were wrestling and 
the tube came out of my arm and blood just shot all over all my friends and it was fucking hilarious just seeing my blood on all my friends i guess it gave me a sense of mortality when I- this is such a bizarre uh documentary i had no intentions of actually watching it but it made me remember or it, it reminded me i had a best friend at one point and uh he had a brain tumor and in those last few years we got really close because he couldn't drive legally but uh so i would drive him places obviously i'm not i'm not gonna say obviously um of course he would drive sometimes whenever he was filling up to it but um that was my introduction to hospice i, I at that point i had no idea what hospice was and so he was in hospice in the town next to me and a buddy of mine, another really good friend hit me up and he said, Hey man, I need somebody to go to Kansas with me. Cause my sister got her husband or boyfriend or whatever beat her up and so bad that she lost an eye and I need somebody to go with me to move her. And, uh, just in case the dude wants to do something, I just need some backup. I was like, okay, yeah, sure. On our way out. Can we stop by? where my buddy is. He said, yeah, of course. And so we're getting off the highway, pulling into the town and my brother calls me and he says, Hey man, I don't know how to tell you this, but he, he just died. I said, okay. Tell my buddy, I told my buddy who was driving that he said, I mean, you still want to stop by? I said, yeah. Stop by the place that he was at. And they said, well, I mean, he just passed away. I was like, yeah, I got that phone call on the way over here. I'd like to see him. They said, well, the person's here picking up the the body. Let me go check. And they came back and said, yeah, he said, no, just go ahead and wait for the funeral. And I didn't, I didn't know what to say. Like, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be able to be here for the funeral because I I made another commitment. I'm going to be gone for the next three or four days. So I missed my buddy's funeral. Helping out another buddy. And I've always been conflicted about that. I'm glad I was there for my buddy. And the other one, and (laughs) I mean, the one that died, he totally would have been like, yeah, man, because he had hit me up a couple times. Uh, be like, hey, uh, I don't really have anybody else to ask, but uh, would you mind driving me across Texas? Because <laughs> I need to do this. It's like, yeah, man, I've got a couple of days I could spend with you, helping you out. I was young. I didn't do any drugs or alcohol for you know, several days. <laughs> I'll give you my soul, but baby, baby, you can't touch my rock and roll. Oh. Yo, we're about to eat some, we're about to cook some beef now. I just want to say for the camera, Aaron, you're fucking wasted. I'm just having a good time, dude. Aaron was the last person I thought anything like this could happen to. Just kind of kid who just had an energy level about him that was so much higher than most people. Living every day like it was the best day of his life and like he knew it was going to be the best day of his life. Just kind of making it happen that way. But he was still able to be mischievous, you know. He wasn't this perfect soul, which sometimes is good because it helps you get through bad days and you can remember all the asshole things he does. He was really fearless, you know, I was a fearless kid. I tried to emulate that. Aaron thought he'd be the oldest person to ever live. We were up late talking about something. I think, you know, like life after death and things like that. And he was getting really freaked out about it. And even tearing up a bit. And he decided at that moment, I'm going to live forever. There were and will be many people in many moments that aren't seen in this video. But I really wish I could live all of them forever. Just on random occasions, I remember one time we were in the park in Italy and we were just sitting there and just randomly he was just like, fuck, I don't want to die. And that was like a week before that happened. He definitely had a a little obsession with it, almost like he knew 
it wasn't going to be that way, but kind of is in some ways, you know. It's a major drive behind a lot of art, you know, like a lot of people do art because they know they're going to die, and they just want to leave something behind. I mean, a lot, a lot of Aaron's old videos and things, I mean, they always make you laugh. You gotta feel the fucking world in your soul, cause you're a soul rebel. Remember being real young and we got a video camera, a family video camera, we're all real stoked, real big VHS holder, and um, Aaron being more excited than anyone else, he just had so many ideas, couldn't wait to like put him down on film and freaking out. He never met a camera he didn't like, ever, whether it's a still camera or, you know, a video camera. He wanted to be remembered, so he wanted to make anything he could. Tons of little films, always had an idea about it. Like nine times out of ten, if you talk to him and he wasn't doing scorecard or anything, he'd just say, I have a great idea for a video or I have a great idea for a commercial. He was very patient with himself to, like, make it the best he could. He did a lot of extra things that he think needed to be put in. Like, after he had all the footage, he'd be like, oh, I'll do this right now, just because he thought it needed to be there. No fucking way. <laughs> It's lucky, and I think that it's great that that I and everyone else has the ability to go and, and look at these tapes and these skits. Aaron wrote a short story called The Day I Died when he was 11. Just then, my soul stepped out of my body, and right at that moment, a big, bright tunnel appeared right before my eyes. I took one step in and turned around to take one last look at the earth. It's intense. Uh, I recently had a birthday, and uh, it's kind of freaking me out because I feel like the older I get, the faster time goes, you know? The funny thing about Aaron is he didn't want us to ever acknowledge his birthdays because he hated getting older. Like, he, he would try to convince people he was 17. He and I promised each other that we were going to make IDs every year on our birthday that made us 17 years old. I turned 25 on the year anniversary of his death, so it's kind of... I don't really want to be 25, and, but then like every year that I have a birthday and I bitch about getting older, it's the same fucking day that he died and he won't have that year. I wrote it because Aaron told me a story about him and his father found a dead beaver in their pond and they, and they started crying and like I guess they never really cried together much. And just because it was just dead, you know? The squirrel's never going to get up and run around again. We started talking about people's need for religion in their life to explain death. Bob, uh, do you believe in God? I guess. Why, do you? How can there be a God? It's extremely weird watching it now that Aaron's standing over this... ...about looking at a dead body. It's creepy as shit. But that's Bill Barr's gosh. Oh, we made a pact that if he died, I would go to his room and I would hide his porn and like make sure no one found it. I'd go to his like computer and delete the files. <laughs> and uh, I did. And it's I turned it into a bit. That's why we had all these packs because we were always talk, like real logically talking about our own death. Like all those little packs and promises you make, you actually have to do. Like I had to hide his porn. <laughs> Nothing on that? Nothing? If 50% of the people aren't laughing, I don't do the joke. Oh, that was, that was rough. <laughs> Is there people who still here? I don't know. At least everyone just laughed. If you don't make people laugh, you failed. And that's just what it is. You failed. <laughs> that whole pack thing reminds me of another uh, best friend I had who was a troubled soul. One of the last times that we hung out, he ended up Passed away from a heart attack. He was addicted to drugs and stuff. But uh, one of the last times we hung out, just nonchalantly, he was like, hey, man, if I ever, like, whenever I die, like, obviously they're going to want to do a natural funeral and all that kind of stuff, but uh, promise me you'll steal my body from the, from the place and put me on a makeshift raft and, and sit, set me adrift and, and shoot arrows at it give me a viking thing whatever burn my burn it <laughs> and without even thinking i was like yeah sure
That's yeah. Sad. Again, it was so funny that you just you have to laugh. Like I saw the kid kick himself in the face once because he was missing his girlfriend. You know, he would he would piss his pants for shock value. I mean, when when that person dies, it's really hard to not laugh, even though it's the saddest thing you've ever seen. I guess I always have this kind of a sense of sadness. It's kind of dull, just numb. Not really even very powerful, just kind of numb. It's a dull ache. I really want to do jokes about Aaron just because it makes me feel closer to him. And uh, I, I want to do more in the future. But the harshness of death, I want to avoid. I don't even know what the comedy of death really means. Uh, it's like, is doing comedy about death help me? Uh, no. I, uh, I think it's just uh, the morning process just takes time. And since I'm a comedian, I've incorporated it into my life as a comedian, but it's not therapeutic for me to see other people laugh. I thought it would be, but it's not. To see other people laugh at the misery of the death of a loved one. I just want people to be happy, you know. I don't, I don't need to shock people anymore. You know what I mean? Let's see what's up next. Oh yeah! That thing's so raw now. I'm gonna be your guide tonight through the giggles and the wiggles. Love is cool. You guys like love? Love's a nice thing. That's great. Thank you. People grieve in different ways. I think it's kind of the, this documentary is kind of strange because he even, I mean, it's still, it's done in Owen's kind of way because he still made it about himself really I don't know I try not to assume someone's in intentions or, or whatever but knowing who and what Owen has done and is it's just strange anyways th this turned into something that I did not uh, think it was going to be it made me think about some people I hadn't thought about in a minute. Anyways, that was weird. This whole video is weird. <laughs> this is the Texas Goat Radio Show. As always, till next time.